six years ago, the umbrella movement started here. I guess, like, I always thought of myself as a global citizen before that. I've always been a social activist, and I think, like, anywhere on Earth is the same. But as soon as the umbrella movement started, and we occupied the Admiralty area, one day I looked down, and I finally think, there is nowhere else on Earth I would like to call home, but here. And I'm proud to say, I am a Hong Konger, and I will fight to protect the city until I die. Today is October the 1st, 2020, National Day. Communist China is 71 years old. When I woke up today, the first thing that come into my mind is how many innocent people will get arrested today in Hong Kong. I don't want to leave Hong Kong. I want to stay and fight. Hong Kong is my home. Why should I leave? So let's talk about China. I never really liked China because I grew up with my grandparents and my grandmother was always telling me stories about CCP, how horrible people they are, uh, like the Cultural Revolution and all that. <laughs> October 1st is a public holiday for Hong Kong people because it is the national day for the Chinese Communist Party's nation. A lot of Hong Kong people come onto the street and show their demands for democracy. Abuses and arbitrary search and seizure it has become the normal where everyone are at risk this is why people are so angry about the police uh, they have their pepper ball gun they have baton um, it's like they are preparing for war <laughs> So I remember the day when the uh, Chinese government announced that they are going, they were going to impose this national security law on uh, Hong Kong. I wrote a Facebook post and I said, as an individual, as a free being, as a Hong Konger, I hope I can still maintain my integrity under the time of terror. As a mother of two daughters, I have to admit that I cannot be too proactive 
in street demonstrations. And because of such, I chose to run in district council last year to hope that my administration skill and my other skills can help the situation of Hong Kong and help to fight for the future of Hong Kong. We're creative, we're actionable, and we're flexible like water. That's what I love about Hong Kong and being a Hong Konger. We do not belong to China. We have never belonged to China. Right now, I think the only way out for Hong Kong is to go independent. Ever since last year, whenever I go out to attend protests, I will not only use a phone with a new SIM card, but I will also use a marker to write down the free lawyer's number on the side of my waist. It is the number of Spark Alliance that provide consultation service to protesters. I hope I don't have to use that number one day. I have read so many reports about the protesters got arrested by the Hong Kong police and they got beaten up so badly, they ended up in hospital. In front of us is a banner put up by pro-government camp saying Happy National Day! and welcoming the Mid-Autumn Festival. But it is an illegal banner. I need to obtain a banner number in order to put up the banner. So I am going to file in a complaint. One main thing that we advocate now is that for everybody to prepare for whatever is going to happen, whatever kind of fight, struggle and protest that we are going to hold in the future is to keep fit, just pick a sports and, you know, do your thing and make sure that you are healthy and you live longer than the CCP. So I arrived from Ran Chai Station. Uh, this is what I normally go and observing a uh, protest you know it, it looks normal right but there's something in the atmosphere the journalist association has like sent somebody as an observer here today and hopefully to see like if any rights are being infringed and we hope that like the freedom of the press can still be here in Hong Kong. There are more search and seizures. They are filming. Well, it's, a, it's actually against the privacy ordinance. Right? If there's no crime, why are they searching these people? It's more a tactics of deterrence rather than they were trying to investigate crimes. Oh, let me go. So, you know, we can't stand here. And the police officer just asked me to, you know, go away. Uh, and I think they are. Hi. Um, this young man was enclosed by a, you can see a, a lot of 
police officers here and searched at the moment. So as a district councilor, I also have a duty to be here and witness and observe the whole situation to see if any violence has occurred, to just make sure that the whole thing is fair. I know that like in the past year people always talk about the young people here in Hong Kong, how they defy the government and the police. But you can see like in demonstrations or you know assembly like this actually there are a lot of like older people and um, we call them the silver hair so uh, the older people here are cursing the police at the other end of the alley so, as the pro-democracy movements in Hong Kong grow, there are more divergences between uh, Hong Kong and China. And National Day of the uh, People's Republic of China has become an unpopular public holiday. I got searched by the police five times today. They checked my ID, my bag for dangerous items. One of the officers was staring at my Lin Dong Pig t-shirt literally for five minutes without saying a word. Another policeman forced me to unlock my phone to prove my phone was not stolen property. Lack of knowledge of the law, the mind is full of hatred. How can you expect the police to carry out law and order with justice? For me, being a policeman right now is the most despicable job in Hong Kong. Through obedience, the police betray its own people. The people is supposed to serve. It hide behind the so-called law and order, but this law and order actually without justice. I know a lot of policemen actually hide their profession because they don't want anybody to know, fearing the hate from the people around them. I know the real problem is not the police, but the system behind it. I'm angry at the government. I, I, I'm pissed off with the police. And it's, it's just really kind of like complicated and, 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 and difficult. Sometimes you just feel like you can't carry on like this. This kind of like such a weird feeling like you know what's going on while you actually don't know how would it be like to, to live like people in China, in, in Xinjiang, but, but then you see it coming and, and you just feel that you don't have... You, all you can do is wait and, and, and hope for, you know, like world leaders to realize that this, the CCP is the evil and it's going not to just undermine our democracy and freedom in Hong Kong. It's gonna destroy world democracy. After the government crushed down on the umbrella movement, I fell into a depression. It feels like you tripped and fall into the valley of the shadow of death. So I went out and seek advice from a counselor. My counselor told me to pick up a new sports or a new hobby to keep me distracted. I always admire people who can play music. And the sound of accordion is like an inner voice being heard. I'm actually not so into politics. I don't want to always be a district councillor. I would rather 
to just paint unconsciously, do outdoor painting daily. But yeah, I, I'm not being naive. And in reality, the very reason that you can have the chance to enjoy doing just landscape painting as you like is because you do have that freedom to direct yourself in your life that you can choose what you want to do the most all the time I'm living in a big prison called Hong Kong now. In the center of this prison is the Hong Kong government headquarter. Reading the political erosion of Hong Kong is like reading the first chapter of a dark novel of dystopia. Communism is coming to Hong Kong. I felt my rights have been taken away from me. I can't express my true emotion and I cannot even say my true feelings. But I know all this suppression will only make me more creative to come up with, with uh, even more innovative way to protest. Although we might not be able to achieve what we want to, uh, what we demand in a short one, but those legacy will not fade away. The network, the awareness, the dreams that we have, the angers they happiness we have it will say in our memories and in order to, um, to to go back to the status of being free we'll keep on fighting I sort of feel like China has already taken over completely. I sure do hope it's not irreversibly, but I guess like today reading about the United States issuing a statement about the arrest of protesters on October 1st in Hong Kong made me feel that there is still hope, that internationally we have allies who are on our side. So I'm crossing my fingers and hopefully we're going to take down CCP soon. Hong Kong is already part of China, there's no doubt about it. When the old colonists left, it was only replaced by the new colonists. For me, China is not the problem. It is the political system behind China that corrupts everything good. What do I do? when the Chinese Communist Party take over the world. There's only four choices in the battlefield. It's the 4F. The first F is fear, the second one is freeze, the third one is flight, and the last one is fight. When Hong Kong's free, we're going to celebrate, take off our masks and meet each other and hug each other, and then we'll help build the society that we dream of together. The West should keep an eye on the fall of Hong Kong because our story is not a local story, but a global story. Whatever happens here eventually will spread to the rest of the free world. Police brutality, loss of personal freedom and privacy, collapse of friendship and family. Our problem will eventually become your problem. I believe it is only through effective foreign policy 
that we can stop this erosion. Fight for freedom. Fight for democracy. And make the West and the East shine together.